today's show, we'll finish up with a little more college football. And, of course, more negative news, but we're going to try and turn it positive by uh, by kind of crapping on the NCAA a little bit. So, SI released a uh, an article from Ross Dellinger about six hours ago. It was the, earlier this morning. It says, College football's stringent contact tracing protocol is a massive challenge to the season with high-risk contacts to the virus subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine. Is a college football season even possible? It goes through, and they, they interview and discuss this with Stephen Goodman, an associate dean and professor of epidemiology at Stanford. Uh, he goes through one of his quotes is, you could be talking about knocking out an entire team with this 14-day quarantine based on high-risk contact, which includes collisions at practice, right? So if you've got a guy that ends up testing positive after the fact, and now they're going to test pretty regularly. The NCAA, by the way, their guideline for this is they're going to test 72 hours before Saturday. So they're going to test on Wednesdays. And then they can have a game on Saturday. Do you know how many different things can happen on Thursday and Friday before a game Saturday to get somebody this? I mean, it's insane. It's it, that, that whole thing is ridiculous. But then this side, they're going to try and be really stringent on by saying that if you are in a high-risk contact with somebody that has been found to have the virus, that's nuts. That's absolutely insane. So, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if you test everybody and they don't have it, like, that shouldn't be an issue, but it, it doesn't matter if they test negative or not. If you have been in a situation with somebody that has it, you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. That's absurd. Yeah, the, the rules and the restrictions are just too much. This is, this is, the NCAA didn't want to have anything to do with this. So, all the conferences were working on their own plans. And then the NCAA comes in on the back over the top and says, no, now we have a plan. We're like two, three weeks into getting ready to, to, to fire off. I mean, we're a couple of way, a weeks away from, you know, a month away basically from opening week. week zero. I mean, we're, we're a week away from camps opening, but they've already been doing voluntary workouts, et cetera. Yeah, here's, but, here's what a college and now, athletic director and now said. You're gonna, and now you're going to throw a plan in, and not only are you going to throw a plan in, you're going to throw a plan in that's completely asinine and ridiculous? Uh, well, in here this, over the top? This is an anonymous AD. He said, are you telling me a contact is you and I lining up against each other? Are you block or tackle me? And two days later, I come down with the virus, and now you're out too? Uh, he said, then you're not going to be able to finish the season. One SEC assistant coach described the contact tracing portion of the guidelines as overwhelming, and a Pac-12 team doctor calls the issues a massive challenge. And then West Virginia Athletic Director Shane Lyons, uh, while on an NCAA video news conference, posed a chilling question last week, saying... How can we play the game of football with contract or with contact tracing and not lose the entire team? Like that's that's impossible to do. So yeah. I I don't I don't think this is going to stick. I think they're going to make an amendment to it they have because to. they're they're going to be testing. Like or it, the Power Five just needs to throw their thumb up in the air at them and say, "Good job, you created something. We've already got a plan. We're going to go forward with our plan. Yeah. We all we're going to only play in our conference any damn way." So we don't need you, and we're going to go for it with our plan. Oh, yeah. And you can go pick rocks. What are you going to do if we don't? What, I mean, what what power does the NCAA have over the Power Five anymore? It's not much. Uh, it's not much at all. Uh, so it does say stupid, it hurts you if you're Mark Emmert in the NCAA. Yeah. Uh, this, this does say COVID-19 is known to produce delayed infection. Most people get sick five to seven days from the time of contraction. But research has also shown some who do not show signs until day 14, says Amesh Adalja, a senior scholar at John Hopkins and an infectious disease physician who sits on the NCAA's COVID-19 advisory panel. The 14-day quarantine, while consistent with CDC guidelines, is, quote, a conservative approach. Um, it, this is, this is going to be really difficult to do. I will admit that. Um, this ain't happening. No, it's... It, it's just not going to happen. And the reason why they're doing this, the NCAA, of course, worried about liability. They're worried about all that. And obviously, a lot of colleges are as well. Yes. But it, you got you to gotta look at the science, look at the numbers, and not just, you know, one thing here and there, right? It, you can't fit something. They don't do this for other viruses, other things. I mean, there's people that play with the flu all the time. So 
why is that okay? And I mean, and not that I'm saying that anybody with COVID-19 needs to be playing, but it just doesn't seem to make a lot of logical sense to me. Like, maybe I'm crazy. You, you agree here? No, oh, yeah, I just, think, I just think they're going too far. At some point in time, you're, you're just making it to where this thing that's already really hard to do that we're trying to still do, you're making it impossible to do. Um, this is, so it says, to potentially avoid masses of ineligible players through contact tracing, coaches plan to split a team into small groups, holding as many as four practices in a day this fall, says Todd Berry, executive director of the American College Football Association. Or, sorry, American Football Coaches no, and I, and Association. Anyway, we talked about this the other day with high school sports. There's no reason that, you know, you, you've got enough coaches and enough facilities for these college complexes to where somebody, some groups in the weight room, some groups in the indoor practice facility over here, some groups on the complete other side over there, some groups outside working out on this, some guys are in the pool, some guys are doing this. Like, there's enough small groups or, or enough facilities for all these power five, especially that, that you can work in separate groups. The problem is, is all the DBs work together. Yeah. All the quarterbacks work together. So if one quarterback goes down, all of them go down. If one running back goes down, all when offensive linemen go down, they will all go down because they're all working together. Yes. So working in small groups is smart, but it's also not going to stop it from taking an entire team down because what do you do if the outbreak happens in the quarterback room and those five guys are all ineligible to play? You're just running the wildcat the entire game? I mean, it it would be something close. I mean, and and look, Kentucky did it last year. I mean, they had three quarterbacks that went out. They ended up, yeah, they got Lynn Bowden. But, but it's that's, different. that's an emergency situation. Yeah. You can't predict injuries and stuff like that. We can predict that this thing's probably going to hit at some point in time, some school, and now you're just forcing them to, to go out there. So what do you do with the offensive line? Now you've put everybody in the backfield at, in danger. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, and that's why they're talking about – that's why we were discussing conferences only, right? Conference only games. If you run into a situation like that – the commissioner that, can say, Alabama, your whole offensive lineman's down this week. You're not playing. Whatever game we had scheduled, this is now a bye week until all those guys get two positive tests, or I guess two negative tests, and then we'll put you back on the schedule. And if it takes two weeks, it takes two weeks. You get a two-week bye, and then we figure it out from there. Everybody else is going to keep playing. Yeah, you got it. You got it. This is not not super complex if you were to just not make a whole year schedule and make it. It's hard for a few people who have to make the schedule. Guess what? You're highly compensated. We expect you to do hard things sometimes. You don't get all that money for just having a pretty face and walking around. Yeah. I mean, you got to come up with something, and it's got to be realistic. It's got to be legit. Oh. So, uh, Ben said, run the underfunded high school system of playing your D-lineman and uh, O-lineman. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's well, a little different. If I'm going to do that and I'm LSU, we're not starting, you know, miles that week. No. Okay. No, I don't you, know who the third playing? string quarterback is, but it's not the young hot shot freshman we brought in. It's some walk on that's looking to to run out that gate and 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 be a tiger for a day. This is a Rudy situation. You want a jersey? You want to play? You get to play this yep. week because Sick nobody on scholarship is touching a football. Hi, yay, yay. All right, that is going to wrap it up. So you and I have got some stuff that we've got to handle this evening. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, everybody go check out winningcureseverything.com. Of course, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, and social media platforms are over there. Uh, Joseph said, are we going to remember the Titans and play both sides of the ball? Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what goes hey, on. But I, not I would hope power not. five football, we're not. No, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. There's enough walk-ons. There's enough practice squad guys. We'll, we'll get it figured out one way or another. Uh, with that said, go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Go over to sportsbookreview.com. That is where you will be able to find all of our college football content beginning in August, and we are very, very close to that. So uh, with that said, we're getting out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for jumping in the chat and helping drive the conversation. We appreciate you guys. Go over and subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts. Leave a nice five-star review. We definitely appreciate that. You guys have been wonderful on that. We keep moving up the rankings. We appreciate your help in doing that. Everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we will see you again tomorrow.
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make